Hello YouTube. I uh, hope everybody is doing well. Genuinely hope that all of you got to have a good Father's Day yesterday. Um, I want to talk about two things. Couldn't be no further apart, but uh, I want to talk about fathers. I want to talk about if you don't have your dad around, um, if you're a dad, if you don't have your kids around. Uh, I haven't given my life story out on this channel. Uh, I try to center everything in on how it relates to Joe and what's going on with him. Um, some of you do know that I didn't have a boatload of time around Joe till he got nine years old. And uh, then I was able, by the time he turned nine, I was able to devote all of my time to him. Uh, no more being separated, no more me being in over here in country A or B and him being over here. And uh, something hit me. I was watching something this morning and uh, something hit me like a ton of bricks. Um, And I, I want to tell you, um, when at the beginning there, uh, because I had a lot of time away from Joe, uh, and I hated every second of it too. Uh, he did too. But when I had the time, almost at the very beginning, uh, he would be like, well, Dad, I used to worry about this, and now I don't with you here. Uh, Dad, this, that. And I would say, son, forget all that. I'm here now. Dad, I used to, you know, uh, I'm nervous about this or this guy or that or that. I'm here now, Joe. Forget all that. Don't worry about it. I'm here now. And, of course, that gave Joe a huge uh, sense of security. And uh, me, I'm, I'm uh, I'm calming some in my old age, so you, if you could only imagine how I used to be, uh, very volatile uh, firecracker. And I'm not a huge guy, uh, but uh, Rocky Graziano, former middleweight champ and contender, I believe he was middleweight champ at some point, and contender, uh, I mean, this guy fought Sugar Ray Robinson. They asked, they was talking about fear amongst boxers on a program. And he said, I didn't fear anybody. I felt like I could beat anybody. Uh, I told Joe Lewis in the gym, give me a try. I'll, I'll take you, you know, the heavyweight champ. Not only the heavyweight champ. In my best actuality the best heavyweight champ of all time the man and uh so joe had a strong dad around him but even if i were a weaker fella uh, uh it would have gave him a sense of security and confidence and uh and all anyway see so Now, as I was thinking about that, just stop and think about that. I'm telling Joseph, hey, Joe, forget all of that. Don't worry about it no more. I 
am here now with you. Think about that. I'm going to let a few seconds go off while you think it, maybe two or three, four or five. I, the exact feeling that Joe had there and I had with him for him from a protection point, providing point, go-to guy in any problem, uh, the whole nine, the whole logist, shoulder to crown, everything, boost for the confidence, yes, you can do this and you must, discipline, everything. Uh, a lot of you know, because I've said this many times, my dad died when I was uh, had just turned 11 years old. So, uh, But I got the same feeling that Joe got to get way later on in life. Uh, when I started developing a relationship with the King of Kings, when I truly started reading the Holy Scripture and finding out who the real, strong Jesus Christ, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit parts, which are one, and the strength and the boldness and the goodness there and the protection there and the getting everyone through, through it all there, the kindness, the gentleness, the condemnation, everything. Uh, I once I I met the real Jesus that the Bible thoroughly explains to us, but churches simply just do not preach uh, hardly anywhere anymore. Uh, once I met him and developed that relationship, it was the same, and I felt like Joe feels with me. See. So, think about that a little while, young folks, whether you're the dad or whether it's the boy or the girl, just think about that. Just think. I was a very smart guy. I had a, a IQ, a real IQ, university administrative test, and I was well into the... Uh, intelligentsia of the day 30 years ago but uh, 35 now and uh, maybe even longer than that uh, so I thought I knew a lot of things but the older I got the more I realized I don't know too much nothing uh, not with the way of the world and the workings but so I in the second half of, of my life and actually getting and providing for myself uh, through my own investigation and my own work got Rocky coming through here uh, got to learn a lot through self-educating myself and uh, I know more than a university education could have ever shined on me uh, I tell folks every day I wasted a good chunk of my life working myself to death and going to that university, and I did. Uh, some of it good, but uh, a lot of it not so good. So take that and chew on it and digest it. Now I want to talk about um, martial art, uh, not, not martial art, combat sport truth. Uh, because people get idolized, they get put way on high when in actuality they shouldn't. So, uh, I've, I've talked about Ali, who was a great, great boxer. Um, and not really made an attempt to pull him down, but made an attempt to be open with the truth concerning him. So we got another guy that we're going to go to. The other guy you ain't supposed to ne'er question. Could kill anybody. 
uh, before you could pull the trigger of a gun, he could be across the room and kick you. Uh, that was never in competition. I always had inflated stories about him and got his reputation from actors such as Steve McQueen and uh, uh, James Coburn and people like that. Uh, real phony tough guys, but movie tough guys of the 60s and 70s. But they were really not tough guys at all. But they were great actors. Uh, and just to let you in on a little secret, um, John Wayne would be mowed down by John Wesley Harden or Wild Bill Hickok. So there you go. Uh, although I love John Wayne. Uh, I love the actors I just mentioned too. Nothing against them. But we're talking about conflated uh, beyond embellishment here, way beyond embellishment. Uh, Bruce Lee would not have stood a chance against Chuck Norris, for example. And many of you young people, you probably, you'll know who Chuck Norris is and you'll know who, obviously know who Bruce Lee is. Uh, not taking nothing away from him, but any decent, not great, but decent jujitsu master at that time would have took him down and pretzeled him, and that would have been that. Uh, Quentin Tarantino, a guy that has produced and directed movies that I do not like, I think are filthy, but in that last one, A Dream in Hollywood or something like that, where they're a uh, big, big, huge movie so a few years ago, uh, they have Brad Pitt in a skit in that movie uh, as this jiu-jitsu guy who was a, uh, a champion guy. I forget his name. Uh, the guy everybody listens to the podcast, Joe Rogan, really liked that guy and said this dude was a bad dude. But the stuntman who he was supposedly being in that movie beating up Bruce Lee on a movie set. And uh, there's uh, Quentin Tarantino had to come out and apologize. Everybody's freaking out over this. You're desecrating Kung Fu and all that. But all I would ask you guys today, you get on YouTube, uh, Kung Fu Master versus uh, uh, a taekwondo competitor or a boxer and these guys get demolished pretty much not every single time but almost every single time uh, not uh, folks even taekwondo uh, you, these these arts of self-defense are are good things and are good for kids to learn but uh the way that these folks compete is so controlled and the volatileness so limited that you don't know what they can do. They don't know what they can do in, in many given situations. So uh, a jujitsu guy would pretty much mop the floor up. If he gets his hands on a boxer, it's just going to destroy him or a good MMA guy, or a good kickboxer. Um, and they get you down, and they pretty much master the art of these holds. Uh, they'll fold you up in a second flat. Uh, trust me on that. Uh, now, is that saying every jiu-jitsu master, or whatever they are, can beat every boxer or MMA guy? No, it's not. But... Uh, Relating back to Ali, Ali, uh, excuse me, Bruce Lee. Uh, Bruce Lee was pumped up. He was a Hollywood product. And I actually saw a 
program where they were taking all the sound out of Bruce Lee movies, just 100% of the sound out, so you didn't get the uh, thumps like the Rocky movie where you hit and you they make a sound effect for you to hear. And to relate it, I'll relate it like this. If you think that uh, that Bruce Lee was the baddest dude on the planet, then you should come to the realization in your brain you're saying the same thing as uh, Sylvester Stallone because he played Rocky Balboa could beat Muhammad Ali. Both in their primes. I mean, because it's about the same thing there. It's the same psychology going on there. But you can, without all that or around uh, that was with Bruce Lee, that's not there with Sylvester Stallone playing Rocky Balboa, uh, you see where that magic for Bruce Lee can quickly be de uh, deflated. All these things, you see Bruce Lee standing there, he throws a six-inch punch, uh, guys falling back in the chair and all that. Uh, those things are set things. Uh, you stand there so I can hit you and let's see if you fall back in the chair. But you go and you start dissecting some of these things and you see that people were actually helping him and you see a chair sliding back and stuff. Uh I don't want to demean Bruce Lee in any way, hard worker. Uh, we're coming to find out now with released letters from him to his wife and things. Uh, he was doing a lot of drugs with a fellow actor. And chances are that's not what he died of. He died of an allergic reaction to, uh, they say, just one tablet of a... Uh, anti-inflammatory uh, uh, pill but uh, and I believe that but uh, he was so skinny and so down to just skin and muscle that his body couldn't even handle that one tablet so that should tell you some things you need to know too uh, I believe he was probably a good guy uh, I'm convinced of that because so many people that know him, they just talk him up to high heaven. So he must have been a really good guy that people really loved a whole lot. And that's a good positive thing about him. But uh, even Ali, uh, Bruce Lee was asked, could you beat Muhammad Ali? And his reply was, he held his hand up and said, will you look at this? This is a Chinese hand. Go look at his hand. That man would kill me. So, and he would have. There wouldn't have been, uh, he could have, and I'm not talking about just a boxing match. It could have been anything. Uh, Ali would have beat this guy. Somebody like Sonny Liston would have demolished him. Uh, so, it's a lot of the younger people and older adults that just give you say one thing about Ali or Bruce Lee uh, and boy it's just you've started a war nobody wants to hear no truth you're lying out this truth is lies and on and on and uh, I would say to these people uh it is sad that most of you would not defend decency as much and goodness as much as you would or defend elderly or children as much as you would defend these two guys. So go think if you've been fell in that category, I just ask you to go think. I'm not mad at you, I'm not putting you down. I'm just saying it's a psychology thing. And we all fall into these things to one extent or another and with different people. We all fall into that. Uh, up in this house, uh, we got three fighters. One's current. Uh, the current light heavyweight bare knuckle BF, 
KC bare knuckle champion. Don't say nothing about this guy in this house. We don't want to hear it. It's fighting words. <laughs> and we don't want to hear nothing but, uh, about Sonny Liston or Mike Tyson. We got 20 others, really. Joe Lewis. Don't want to hear it. Ain't going to sit and argue with you about it. But uh, we know that all the people I just mentioned are... Uh, Richard Torres, a young Mexican American heavyweight in California. Don't, don't want to hear it. Don't you know? These are our guys. Um, so, um, top of the list would probably be Danny, Danny, sitting guys, Danny Christie, Richard Torres, uh, Sonny Liston, Mike Tyson, Joe Lewis. But there's 30 others that it's just sacrilegious in this home to talk about. You might as well be in here uh, trying to yell at or curse Jesus in this house, which ain't going to happen. Uh, so it might happen out there in the streets, but what we're in control of, we, we will control we're up and around here. And you should do the same in your, in your home too. So uh, two little... Look, not little things there. What I started out with was very big. It was, it's big for me. It's big for Joseph. And it can be for anybody. And the second thing there I just wanted to talk about because it's quite ludicrous and ridiculous and moronic that People have been really prop, propagated with propaganda so much that they actually believe that Bruce Lee is what all these guys say he is. And, uh, uh, you know, Chuck Norris was the karate champion back then and did a movie, one or two movies with Bruce Lee. And uh, he's been very kind and gentle with Bruce Lee's uh legacy and Bruce Lee was his friend but uh, he's let it be known uh, uh, when he says Bruce Lee was not a competitive uh, combat not not a sports competitive combat guy and I was so I hope that answers your question so uh, any of these uh, Bruce Lee, for his weight, may have been able to be a pretty good uh, learning some takedown techniques and hold techniques. May have been a, a fairly decent uh, MMA guy. Uh, he may, if he had boxed, uh, had been a decent uh, junior welterweight. Uh, but he wouldn't have been a world champion at either of those things, or anything. Uh, if he would have took all the art and the things that he learned and tried to cultivate and went against Chuck Norris for the karate championship, he would have gotten demolished. And you just have to look. So uh, combat sport, be it boxing, MMA, Taekwondo, karate, jiu-jitsu, I could go on and on, kickboxing, uh, uh, collegiate wrestling. Um, all these things are very volatile and very violent. And Bruce Lee was never a part of that, of that world. And uh, uh, so I don't mean to demean him or pull him down. But I am just trying to state some facts to you young fellas and to some of you older fellas that have been completely hoodooed uh, by liberal Hollywood movie stars who were fake tough guys that promoted all this propaganda that turned the Bruce Lee myth into this big thing that it has gotten bigger since his death, obviously, over the years. And seems to get be getting stronger as time goes on, and uh, uh, it's demeaning, in my opinion, to others 
that have been in competitive combat sport to hear that this movie star uh, could wipe through them because that's just simply not true. So I'm going to leave that at that. Love to everybody. Uh, look around in this world, investigate everything, be in discernment, which means trying to figure out right and wrong. Uh, look at all things, be in judgment of all people and all things. It's this thing, don't judge, has been taken way out of context. You, you, you need to be in judgment of people to the aspect that you're looking. Hey, are they good? Are they bad? No, they're doing these bad things. I need to go the other way. See, uh, because we are a product of our environment. All of us are. So, uh, you hang around with tough guys long enough, you're going to end up being a tougher guy than you were before you started hanging around with them. You hang around with effeminate sissies over here, and eventually you're going to become more effeminate. So, uh, you hang around with a den of thieves over here, eventually you may start thieving. And we know because the Bible said if you're hanging around a den of thieves, you are a thief. So, Think about that. You over there hanging around a bunch of effeminate men or manly women, uh, you, you are one of them. You over here hanging around tough guys, you are one of them. You are over here, here hanging around with very highly ethical fellas, you, you are one of them. So keep that in mind, guys. Much love to everybody and blessings to everybody. And remember, if Jesus comes knocking on that door, make sure it is the real Jesus and not this phony, fake, false Christ that Jesus warned us would be all over, which they're all preaching about today. And uh, make sure it's the real Jesus Christ and let Him in. You will get in more inner peace and more, uh, you will be more secure feeling than you ever felt in your life. Um, let him in. You'll eventually be bowing to him and loving him. Uh, not because he's buying you a Cadillac or a uh, Rolex watch, but because he's really taking care of you, who you are. So remember that, guys. Much love to you, and we will check you later.